the truck, Chief. Samson's riding on tails. I think it's... Ah! 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 Your driver acts now, fatty. Take this. I'll slow him down. <laughs> the Unicorn in Captivity is the seventh episode of season seven. It first aired on September 16th, 2018, and was written by Jackson Public. In it, Dr. Venture perfects teleportation, which both the Guild and the OSI both want for their own use. The Monarch joins a crew to steal the teleporters to boost his EMA level, while Brock and Hunter try to reason with Doc that he won't be safe as long as he's in possession of a teleportation device. The latter half of Dr. Venture's storyline draws a ton of inspiration from the movie Eyes Wide Shut, which also featured sex parties, people in creepy masks, and an Illuminati-like secret society. And just in case you don't know what the Illuminati is, they are believed to be a group of ultra-powerful people that secretly control the entire world. The short story, The Lady or the Tiger, is referenced in this episode. If you aren't familiar, it's basically the super-famous open-ended story in which a man is sentenced to open one of two doors with either a romantic match behind one or a ravenous tiger behind the other. The story concludes with him opening a door, but the reader is never informed of his fate. The Monarch, needing functional wings, tells Gary to bring him the Glengarry wings. The Monarch is referencing the movie Glengarry Glen Ross, in which the Glengarry leads were the contact information for the best prospective customers for the film's real estate agent main characters. The namesake of the episode, The Unicorn in Captivity, is one of seven Hunt of the Unicorn tapestries which tell the story of, you guessed it, a unicorn hunt. No one is actually sure what order the tapestries are meant to be viewed, though. Today, the tapestries can be found hanging in the Cloisters, a museum in Washington Heights, and the basis for the setting of the second half of this episode. Tiny Eagle, who is surveilling Dr. Venture and is unceremoniously killed by Brock, hasn't been seen since the Season 2 opener, Powerless in the Face of Death. Have intercepted message from Butterfly to Cocoon. Ready to transmit data. Copy, Tiny Eagle. Ready to receive. Side note, I totally didn't realize until this watch through that the reason they have room for the Monarch on the heist crew is because they need another flying guy after Tiny Eagle was killed. One of the heads of the Illuminati-like society is very obviously Roy Brisby, which makes sense as a stand-in for Walt Disney. General Manhowers also may be a member. The previously on her Dr. Quentin Ball also seems to be present. Some people have attributed this figure to the guy from the college in Mexico from episode one, and yeah, they clearly have the same silhouette, but I think it's more likely that they just reused an old character design. Of course, none of this is actually real, so should I even be talking about it in relation to canon? Probably not. The whole Eyes Wide Shut parody stuff doesn't do a whole lot for me, to be honest. Also, I'm still not totally sure if it was all designed by a computer programmer, or if it was somehow leeching off of Dr. Venture's own memories and thoughts. Regardless of that, the Monarch storyline in this episode is damn good. It completely elevates the episode to one of my favorites of the season. The heist is cool, the double cross is cool, the team of villains is cool. I even like Presto Changeo, who, by the way, is played by the kick-ass Mark Hamill. Man, I love the Monarch story in this episode. And I love the Venture Brothers. As always, thank you for watching and go Team Venture. Tune in next week for the Terminus Mandate. If you dug this video, share it with a friend. And if there was some huge glaring thing that I missed in this video, follow me on Instagram at VentureverseGuide to see these videos a week early and offer your input before I upload the final product.